accuracy increased to 5 to 10 percent, and Planck will be accurate to an incredible 1 percent or better. ESA has designed and built the Herschel and Planck in a common engineering program, and they have a joint uh, uh, program with the engineering uh, partners in, in Europe, built by Thales uh, Alenia. Thales Alenia Space. And with one area enlarged. Next in a series of film explaining the science and the mission, the Lagrange point, which you've heard mentioned, but a little more details. The existence of these points was discovered in 1772 by the Franco-Italian mathematician Joseph Louis Lagrange as part of his studies of planetary physics. Take a two-body system such as the Sun and the Earth. He predicted that there were five points where a third small object will remain in a fixed position. After launch, a spacecraft continues in the same direction unless influenced by the gravity of a celestial body. Lagrange postulated that at certain places, the attraction of two large bodies, the Sun and the Earth for instance, on the smaller one, would find a point of equilibrium, a place where the third would remain in place in an orbit around that point. Two Lagrange points are ideal for space missions. L1 on the sunward side of the Earth has been the home to the ESA NASA Solar Observatory SOHO and to two NASA satellites ACE and WIND. L2 lies in the opposite direction, one and a half million kilometers beyond our planet. Space observatories placed there maintain their orientation with respect to the Sun and the Earth, they have an unrestricted view of the heavens, and thermal shielding and calibration problems are much simplified. NASA's W map, studying the cosmic microwave background, is already operating in an orbit around this L2 point. Herschel and Planck will rejoin it, taking about three months to reach their final positions, in fact, periodic orbits around the nominal L2 point. Picked up by the Libreville station, that's in uh, Gabon on the east, the west coast, sorry, of Africa. Six minutes to go in the upper stage fuel tanks. Now, the Lagrange point has a different, it's a different model, it's a different orbit than we're used to, right? Yes, and it worth to mention that the L1, 2 and 3 Lagrange points are unstable but stable in a plane perpendicular to the thin Earth's axis and it turns out that it's possible to find stable and quasi-periodic orbits in such a plane which are called halo and Lissajou orbits. Although not perfectly stable, the halo or Lissajou orbits do not require too many maneuvers to keep the satellite on station. Herschel will be out on a quasi-halo orbit of 800,000 kilometers. Our next to last film, which will tell you all about the mirror on Herschel, I think you find this interesting. Sir William Herschel's 40-foot telescope, completed in 1787 with its 48-inch mirror made of bronze weighing half a ton, was a wonder of the age. The famous astronomer would be truly astounded by the telescope of the Herschel Space Observatory. Its primary mirror was manufactured by brazing together 12 segments of silicon carbide, a novel, hard ceramic material. After stiffening and grinding, the mirror shell thickness was reduced to 3 millimeters, its mass passing from 720 to 240 kilograms. After ultrasonic inspections of the brazed joints and vibration tests at EADS Astrum in Toulouse, the mirror was flown to Finland. There, in an optical laboratory at Turku University, the parabolic reflector began a lengthy ultra-high precision polishing, reducing surface errors from 170 to 1.5 microns, or thousandth of a millimeter. That's smaller than a human blood cell. Transported to the Calar Alto Observatory in Spain, it was then coated with a thin aluminium reflective layer and given a protective silicon oxide coating. Great precautions have been taken to protect this glittering smoothness from any contamination. The dimensions of a primary mirror of a reflecting telescope like Herschel or Hubble dictates how much light it can collect and the further it can see. With its 3.5 meters, Herschel has twice the reflecting area of Hubble and almost 20 times the collecting area of previous infrared space telescopes. 
the observatory will have an astounding vision, capable of detecting a source with a brightness just one million, million, million of a 60 watt light bulb. This is what's left of the 770 tons that took off uh, at liftoff. The black is the bell shaped carrying structure for the second satellite. On the right is the exposed uh, first satellite. Alex uh, Herschel looking at star formation, but Planck designed for the Big Bang. Yes, the uh, Big Bang theory that is today almost inevitable if one wants to explain what space and Earth's telescopes have observed so far. This is also correlated with the laws of physics that we know. One of the fundamental aspects of the theory is based on the expansion of the universe. Herschel and Planck will surely tell us much more on this. And our last film is on cosmic microwave radiation, another aspect of the mission tonight, and the upcoming field will explain what that is. Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson wanted to see whether this antenna could measure radio waves from the Milky Way. During calibration tests, by accident, they recorded a mysterious signal at a seven centimeter wavelength. It corresponded to a temperature of about 2.7 Kelvin, or minus 270 degrees Celsius, near absolute zero. The two men were initially unaware that they had perchance stumbled upon something that cosmologists were predicting, the existence of a fossil emission produced shortly after the Big Bang, about 14 billion years ago. Current models in cosmology assume that in the distant past, the universe was uniform, very hot, that as it expanded it cooled and that slight gravitational instabilities allowed the formation of galaxies. If correct, then there would have been minute fluctuations in the density of this primordial universe, and these could eventually be detected as slight temperature anomalies. Confirmation came in 1992 with a NASA satellite, COBE, which detected these irregularities for the first time. Another step was made in 2001 with a second NASA satellite called WMAP. It is now Planck's turn to measure these minute temperature variations, imprints in the cosmic microwave background. They are, in a way, the seeds present just after the Big Bang and which have led to the creation of the universe as we know it today. With just a minute left in the upper stage burn, we will be uh, soon into the non-powered flight phase. You can see on the lower left the kilometer 739 now. Rapidly we're starting to climb again. The two satellites are going to be separated at respectively 1,100 and 1,700 kilometers. And I can notice that the, uh, still the uh, flight simulation is matching perfectly the uh, real-time trajectory. In the film, he talked about the Big Bang. Now, how much do we really know about the Big Bang? Well, what we know, the Big Bang theory states that the initial universe was highly concentrated and hot, and that the first elementary particles like quarks and electrons were uh, made, followed by the protons and neutrons, leading progressively to the formation of the first atoms. But this universe was totally opaque. Then the first photons, uh, due to the decreasing temperature, could escape from this hot soup of particles. So we heard the uh, extinction of the uh, upper stage, so uh, we are now entering the ballistic phase. Power shut down, and we're going to start uh, actually coasting. And uh, this, is a, this is a very complicated procedure because we have to spin the composite in actually yes, three different have, directions. Yes, uh, we have a series of waiting phases and small adjustment boosts so as to properly orientate the launcher before the...